Hello my friends, welcome to Pro Arm Strings. I'm Henriette and today we have a slightly different kind of video about how to cycle with a violin. And this video I've made for two reasons. First of all, it is a subject very close to my heart because I tend to commute all the time with my violin on my bike and I get asked about it quite a lot. So lots of my pupils come to their lessons on their bicycles and um, parents ask me all the time if I can recommend it and how they should go about it. So I thought it might be a subject that might interest more people. In this video I'm going to talk you through things to think about when you think about commuting with your violin. I will also show you what not to do that I've learned from bitter experience, things that don't work and then towards the end of this video I'll take you outside and show you and my setup on my bike. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So the main ways I would recommend carrying your violin on your bike is either as a backpack or with a cross strap that crisscrosses the front so your violin is like crisscrossed at your back or to have them in panniers and that is also a very safe way to carry a violin. Parents of younger children often ask me how they can best cycle with a violin and the way that I recommend children to cycle with their violins is put the violin in a backpack. Uh, that is the safest way to go about it and it means that your backpack will have built-in straps that are made for carrying your, your backpack. So you might put it on your child's back and see how that fits. Uh, because what you might need to do is to double check that it is neither too high and the violin is going to hit their heads all the time or their helmets if they cycle with the helmet and neither is the backpack too low so it bangs against the back of the bike. So having the correct height is very easily adjusted isn't it by pulling the straps but it's quite important to make cycling with um, a violin in a backpack safe. Adults might get a violin case like that with built-in backpack straps uh, and they are obviously made to do the job and this is nice and securely sewn in into the violin case. Now it tends to be the higher end violin cases that have these built-in straps because the violin cases are also slightly lighter and obviously you're looking for quite a light violin case if you're going to carry it on your back any length of time. So either the crisscross straps or the backpack straps and the same issue with adjusting the height properly applies here you don't want to have this violin case too high so it interferes with your head and neither do you want to have it too low so that it sits on the back of your violin and it rattles there but you know with these straps it's quite easy to adjust the right height isn't it. I know of some mo motorbike riders who commute with their violins on their backs and they complain that if the violin sits too high um, that bit, the top end, will catch a considerable amount of wind so it makes the whole thing less stable so that's another thought for you to consider. So I recommend going for the purpose-made backpack straps. If I don't use them I can take them off and hide them away inside this violin case so that all is neat and tidy and it's not rattling about. Let me give you a couple of ideas about how you can manage the inside of your case for a safe transportation on your bike. What I'd like you to try is to see if your violin rattles and this you want to try and avoid. How can you avoid that? By perhaps getting a little cloth and wrapping it round here like that and then it's strapped in much more securely. Still it rattles a little bit so I might grab a tea towel or something and put it round the instrument so that you get rid of this. Although my case is fairly nicely padded and I always travel without a tea towel, it does make a difference when you strap it in properly. Secondly, you want to make sure that this lid or any other lid that you've got in your violin are properly secured. Like it's happened to me in the past when this wasn't properly closed. Now I do carry a lot of junk in there, but what you don't want uh, to have happen is that your heavy mute, for instance, 
if this opens up during cycling your mute falls onto your violin because that is going to scratch your instrument isn't it so you make sure that this is absolutely properly closed before you start traveling the bows are also properly strapped in at both sides so that they don't drop down on the instrument when you lift the case up i mean this is not specifically for cycling but it is also for when you walk with your violin case obviously and then i've got this little protective cover over the top so that the bows also do not touch the instrument there are lots of violin cases that i see that have got loose straps that you clip on the violin cases they're not really suitable, so you have to always mistrust uh, connections like this, for instance, or this one. This would look a lot sturdier, and I would say if you have the choice, then go for this one, not that one. Uh, but this one can actually, if it gets caught, can unclip itself. So um, the risk of the violin falling off your back is uh, quite real on, on these clips as well. You will find, if you look in my shop, there are a couple of cases that have carabiner connections. They are a lot safer. And then uh, there is one that has a double strap, so your strap is always secure. Should one strap fail, there's always another connection that's holding it up. So that is quite good. I can't reiterate this again, uh, these clips and especially the plastic version of these, uh, please, please stay well clear because they're just too insecure. Before I show you how I cycle, I want you to be warned that you should not really carry a violin in a front basket on a bike because it affects the balance too much. Also, if you go, uh, if you ride on a bumpy road, it starts to bash up and down in your front basket. So that's a big no-no. And certainly be careful that you don't ever have the violin in your hand when you cycle. Again, that is a risk for balance, but also you can't steer it properly. And if it gets in front of you crisscross, you're simply too wide to, to ride in traffic. Now, people also, <laughs> I've seen many different things in my career. People sometimes strap the violin to their bikes. And that is very risky as well, because if you fall over, the, the, the case may get stuck underneath your bike. So I definitely would avoid strapping the violin case to the bike unless you've got it in a dedicated carrier. And in a moment, I'm going to go outside and I'll show you how I commute with my violin. So after many years of cycling with my violin, I think for me, I've found pretty much the ideal setup. So you can see on the, I've got two pannier bags that come away from the bike. I'll show you that in a minute. On the left hand side, on the inside, the curb side of my bike, I've got my violin. And as you can see, I've secured it with a strap just to make sure that it doesn't move. Um, so I've got that as an extra security. My violin's quite high up, but it's fine. It doesn't doesn't touch my feet when I pedal, and it is it is very secure on the bike. Then on the other side, I've got space for my books and all the other junk that I tend to carry, and it has a reflective section. In this case, the brand name, but you know there is some reflective stuff on there as well. I can very easily take the bags off. Just simply touching this handle un undoes the little clips. So to take the violin off, I just unclip this, get this out of the way, and take it off here. So it couldn't be easier really. Putting it back on as well, like this. Securing it with the strap. And putting the bag back on and it just clips on like so. So go ahead and take a look at my pram strings shop on Amazon where I have collected a couple of useful products for cyclists. Mm -hmm. 